This video covers the most common source of plant illness and disease, but does not touch on insect infestation. Insects and their effects on plants are under an entirely different video heading. We will talk about leaf yellowing, nutrient deficiencies, fungi, mold, root rot, and much more. Continue watching for an invaluable lesson on how to be your plant's doctor and cure more than just the common mold. As the name states, the roots of the plants rot, and this is one of the most common causes of plant illness. Usually this is the result of overwatering in soil environments or low oxygenation in hydroponic systems. In soil, the excess water makes it very difficult for the roots to get the air that they need, causing them to decay. To avoid root rot, it's best to only water plants when the soil becomes dry and to put the plants in a well-drained pot. The addition of perlite or other quick draining and porous materials to heavier soils helps reduce the risk of root rot. Most cases of root rot are caused by members of the water mold genus Phytophthora, so you may have heard it referred to as phyto. If you're unsure whether your plant has root rot, you may be wondering, what does root rot look like? If the plant is slowly wilting and the leaves are turning yellow for seemingly unknown reasons, you'll want to check the roots. The roots affected by root rot will look black and will feel mushy. Affected roots may literally fall off the plant when you touch them. Healthy roots may be black or pale, but they will feel firm and pliable. Start to treat root rot by removing the plant from the soil and washing the roots under running tap water. Wash away as much soil and affected roots as possible while being gentle with the plant. Next, use a sharp knife or a clean pair of shears or scissors to trim away all the remaining affected roots. When you treat root rot, you may have to remove a significant amount of the root system if the plant is badly affected. Continue treating root rot by disposing of the soil in the pot that the plant was in. Wash the pot thoroughly with a bleach solution. Using a fungicide or adding a small amount of hydrogen peroxide also helps control the issue as well. When working in hydroponic systems, simply cut away at dead roots, use air stones or another means of oxygenating the water, and finally add hydrogen peroxide to kill off the organisms causing the disease. When it comes to nutrient deficiencies, there are many causes and many symptoms. This chart helps to show the most common symptoms and the nutrient deficiencies related to each. Keep in mind that just because a plant shows a certain symptom does not necessarily mean it has a nutrient deficiency at all, as each symptom can be attributed to multiple causes. For example, brittle and scorched leaves can also be caused by the light source being too close to plants and causing burning at the tips. However, if that possibility is ruled out, it could be a boron or calcium deficiency. Overfertilization is very common and is usually the result of heavy use of chemical fertilizers. The best way to prevent overfertilization is to always use a nutrient testing meter such as a TDS meter, perform frequent water changes, and follow the directions on the fertilizer bottle for your plant type. Overfertilization usually causes brown or yellow leaf tips, dry tissue, and dead root tips. When overfertilization occurs, it's usually best to fully flush your soil or growing media with fresh tap water for a few days to allow the fertilizer salts to be removed from the media. In the case of hydroponic systems, simply perform a water change and restart with little to no nutrients for a few days to allow the plant to heal from the stress and eject the stored salts and the tissue back into the hydroponics reservoir. You can also use plant tissue repair products such as those shown in the video media section under fertilizer additives. We first talked about dangerous fungi and mold when covering root rot earlier in this video, but now we'll cover pathogens that affect the foliage of the plant. The most common dangerous fungi in the indoor garden is powdery mildew that appears on the leaves. This is usually a sign of excessive humidity and can cause severe plant distress or death if it reaches the plant stem. When fungi takes hold, it's best to treat with a copper soap solution that usually contains copper octanoate. You can simply spray it on any signs of fungal disease and it wipes out the problem in a few days and is relatively safe to use. Note that there are a great many more fungi that can harm your plants, such as Fusarium wilt, but the ones listed here are the most common. Viruses affect plants, not just people, and some viruses can jump from people to plants and back again. Among the most prevalent viruses are streak and mosaic viruses. The streak virus causes discolored, often yellow streaks in the leaf. The mosaic virus causes swirling white and yellow discoloration on the leaves. The discolorations are almost artistic, but soon the leaves wilt. There are literally hundreds of other viruses that can affect a wide spectrum of plants, 
but for simplicity's sake, these are the two major ones to look for in your garden. Leaf yellowing is one of the most common plant symptoms that show signs of plant stress. This chart will help you identify which is the possible cause of leaf yellowing based on a wide array of possible stimuli. Remember, unless you have an expert to help you identify which is the exact cause of the problem, you'll be acting as a doctor and working to diagnose the issue. It is not always easy to identify the problem at first, but with practice it gets much easier. Wilting is a common occurrence for plants grown in soil. It's usually a sign of underwatering and general plant dehydration. This frequently occurs if you have a very light and fluffy growing media and the water pours through it quickly without being held and absorbed. The simple solution is to water more frequently. In other instances, it can be a sign of overwatering as many people forget that the rate of evaporation is usually lower indoors than for an outdoor garden. Another common cause of wilting is if the plant becomes root bound. This occurs when a large plant is kept in too small a plant pot. Plants may also wilt when stressed by cold temperature, diseases, and more. However, this chart here will help identify the seven major causes. In conclusion, there can be many signs of plant disease, and most of the common ones are listed in this video. There are, however, a great many that are less common, but may still occur in your garden, so be sure to do your researching when diagnosing your symptoms. So long as you are attentive to any major health changes in your plant, you can always ask an expert if you don't see the cause of your problem here. We hope this helps you get on your way to better growing, and for more information, visit us at sunlightsheds.com.